Okay, so this is a video here where we're going to continue working on our um, light sensor. And so what we've finished up so far is a, um, is a schematic. And so we've created the schematic, which I'll show you here. So this is our schematic um, with the, the, the light sensor here and the uh, STM32L432 microcontroller. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, do the layout. Now, in, in the last video, we, I alluded to, okay, uh, here's what it looks like when you bring it into um, the layout. So here you are with your, uh, your parts. These are all the footprints that came across from uh, the components in the schematic. Um, those are going to go inside of our board here. This is, a, you know, the, this, this part here inside of this yellow line um, is the board area, and that's denoted in black. And then you've got this this sort of gray gunmetal gray here outside that is uh, that, that denotes everything else, sort of the you know the uh, um, the world outside of your circuit board. So these parts really need to be on this board at some point. Now, the the problem with this board as it sits right now is it's the wrong shape. So we want to put this we're going to put this board into an enclosure, and it turns out that the enclosure that we're going to use is a uh, a Lexan enclosure. Um, that's custom uh, that we're going to want to pull in that um, in that in that enclosure uh, a board. So, uh, but before we do that, what I want to do is I want to um, uh, pretty early on in this process of setting up the um, setting up the, the, to do this layout, I want to add in the design rules that I intend to use, and those are oftentimes driven by the manufacturer of the board, and so. Um, we're going to design this board with Osh Park in mind. Osh Park is a, a PCB supplier. You know, I'll bring up their website here. Um, Osh Park. And so if you go to their site, they kind of have this characteristic purple. And so you can upload things like uh, Fusion 360 uh, electronics files. Uh, you don't even have to generate Gerber files as you did in the old days that they can... Uh, pull things apart just from your BRD file uh, from, you know, what was Eagle CAD but is now uh, Fusion 3 Electronics. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get the design rules from, from this company and we're going to import those into, um, into Fusion 360. And so where you do that is in this rules DRC. If you click on DRC, um, you'll get this dialog here and you can load a set of rules and I've already downloaded those rules you can go and find those you know you'll get rules whether you're doing a two layer board or a four layer board or a six layer board you'll get the rules that you need for the particular uh, layer uh, stack you're going to be using so I'm going to load those I've already got those here in my downloads um, just make sure that um, sometimes when you download things um, especially in Windows it wants to change the extension to something like .txt because uh, it doesn't know what a DRU or design rule file is. And so just remo remove that DRU, uh, remove that .txt stuff from it so that it finds it here. And so go ahead and load that in. And so now it's got the appropriate rules, things like it's got, oh, it's top, you know, it's top and bottom. So two layers, it's got the appropriate clearances so that Osh Park can build it. Um, it's got the, the right distances from things like holes um, to the copper, things like that. So all these are, are things to just to uh, ensure that when we design the board, uh, we have something that can actually be built. Now, if you don't do that, what will happen? Um, the board will be, you know, the, the rules, the default rules that, that Fusion Electronics has are very conservative. And so you just won't be able to uh, cram things as tight as you might otherwise be able to do. Um, so... In general, you know, you can use the default and it will work, uh, but it's better to use the, the rules from the manufacturer that you're going to use. Now, OSH is just one, again, of many, many uh, suppliers of boards. So, all right. So, um, let's come over here. Um, so, now that we've got our design rules in, let's come over here and uh, fire up our data panel again. What I want to do is I want to bring in a board outline for this. And so, um, and I'll attach... Uh, to this video, I'll attach some um, some files. Um, so these are, are, are models that I have created for the enclosure that I designed uh, for this light sensor. And so I want to go ahead and upload those. I've got those in my downloads directory. For those of you here at IU, those will be attached to the assignment. I'll attach those to this video for everyone else. 
And so I'll go ahead and open those here and I'll um, upload. And so it'll bring those into my project here once it uh, uh, does its uh, job there. Okay, perfect. Oh, did I stop it too soon? I may have stopped it too soon. Um, let me do an upload here. I think I forgot the board outline. Yeah, put that in here. All right. Oh, I guess I have two. Let me get rid of one of them. I'm going to move one of these to the trash. All right, so there I've got a board outline and I've got this enclosure. So let's go ahead and open this enclosure. And this enclosure looks like this. Um, so this is a, a little design that I did. I actually did this design uh, in FreeCAD, um, the, the system that we used to use here. Um, I did this in FreeCAD and then I had these, I had a mold made at a place in Minneapolis called Proto Labs. And then they shot this out of a... Uh, um, a polymer, it's, it's a lexan based polymer that, um, that is, uh, is UV stable and it is, um, it, it does not sustain flame. It just melts, um, if it were to get, um, get, get, get on fire or whatever. So, um, so, you know, really the UV, UV stability was, was really important to me. All right. So if we come over here and we turn off the lid and the light filter, You'll see this is the cavity here that we're going to stick our electronics in. Uh, I'm going to turn off these screws too. And so this cavity, you know, things sit up pretty high on these posts. And let me show you why that is. If, if I come over to my document camera, the light sensor that I designed actually has this big uh, lithium chloride battery on the back. And really the enclosure was designed, you know, this is the enclosure. This is one of them. Here's a little O-ring that you see in the picture. Um, and there's a little rubber cap on the back. This little cap is, oops, is to get at the uh, serial port that's there. Um, here's a little glass filter, which is, uh, um, you know, epoxied onto this uh, with a dual cure, um, you know, temperature resistant epoxy um, so that, you know, you, you've got a little bit of give there so that as the, the case expands and contracts, you don't end up with a... Uh, um, don't have problems with with leakage through that that piece of glass. All right, so yeah, that's that's why it sits down. Uh, this particular design, if I put this in the enclosure, this particular design, if you were to you know to look at the board we're making, we're putting a little coin cell. It's gonna you know there's gonna be a lot of room in here uh, for that coin cell here. Let me go back to my Fusion 360. There'll be a lot of room here in this in this cavity, but um, you know I think the coin cell is good at least uh, when you're you're building an early prototype. To play with coin cell, the problem with coin cells um, in general is that at temperature, um, especially cold temperatures, they tend to fall over. Uh, they tend to, uh, um, their ESR jumps up and it makes them uh, um, not, not particularly useful um, if, if you're you know, down in that sort of sub-zero range where sometimes the light sensor ends up taking data. All right, so inside of this enclosure, uh, what we've got is we're gonna put a, we're gonna turn on, whoop, let me turn on this sketch. I created this sketch um, that then I used um, through uh, the tools in Fusion here. This is the Fusion mechanical side here. If you come down to create, I created a PCB from that. And I created an independent PCB, which means that if I were to edit this file, um, then it, you know, then it wouldn't reflect the, the updates. You know, this, this notion of an associated PCB means that you can uh, have somebody designing this enclosure and um, you know, making changes, and then you can pick those changes up in your board outline. In this case, um, this is just a step model, so it's not going to change in this tool. And so, creating an independent PCB is 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 really the, the way to go. And, and the beauty of the independent PCB is it lets us um, use it in our electronics design, and then re-import it back into this design so that we can see uh, where our parts are fitting um, in the actual enclosure here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I wanted to show you where it comes from. We'll be back to this in, in just a little bit, but let me come over to the board outline here. I'm gonna open it up. All right, the board outline, you know, this is basically the, the three-dimensional version of that sketch. Um, it's got these three mounting holes in the, in the right locations, and it's got a couple of holes here that I put there just temporarily so I can uh, 
um, see the center of where the, the little glass filter is, and then also the center of the hole where I need access to, um, to add my connector later. All right, so, so one of the things we can do when we've got a PCB like this is link it to our design. And so if I come up here to this link to 2D PCB, I can click on that, and then I can um, select the design. So that's the, the board that I, I created here. And then I'm gonna select that. And what you're gonna see is now my board outline, that, that rectangle that I had before is now gone. I've got this, um, this new design here of my, um, you know, th that, you know th that round board that fits into my enclosure. I've got that now imported into my, into my CAD system here, so, or into my electronics design. I'm gonna go ahead and do a save. Oh, I'm gonna do a save. Yep. All right, and so now I'm gonna come up here to this uh, push to 3D PCB, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna push the 3D models from all these parts to the PCB. Now, those parts are now sitting off the board, so um, it won't exactly be right, but let's go ahead and do it here. I'm gonna push that to the PCB, push. And what you'll see is it's going to go ahead and pull all that into our design here. And they're kind of sitting off the board here. Um, I've got them kind of, uh, um, you know, some of them are upside down because they were actually on the other side. They're going to go on the other side of the board. Um, and I've done some editing on these files. So, you know, the, these you might have to, to get them to be the way you may see them on your system is, you know, maybe sitting like that. Um, anyway, so they're all kind of cattywampus right now. That's okay. Uh, I wanted to show you one other thing here before we, uh, we kind of end this recording. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. One of the things that you can do with one of these independent PCBs is let's come back to our enclosure. And so in here, what we can do is we can go to our PCB outline and we can insert this into the current design. And so now I've got it inserted and there are my parts I'm sitting off and those are eventually going to be on my board so then I can do, do all kinds of fit checks here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up because one of the powerful things that you can do in a mechanical CAD system is to create joints between things. So if I wanted to place this board down on these pins, I'm going to come up here um, and I'm going to hit J for joint and I'm going to click on this hole right here. Let me zoom in on it. That hole and I'm going to click on this hole here, and it's gonna bring those two together. I'm gonna to say okay. Now everything lays down into the cavity right on top of those pins. I can go ahead and turn on these screws so it looks like the thing is held down by screws. And we can get a real good idea of, you know, interference and whatnot. If I turn on this lid, I can see that, oh yeah, I'm looking straight down through the hole. You know, here's the light filter that goes over the top. Um, on the bottom, I can see that that hole lines up with that plug. So if I were to turn off the, the, the rubber plug on the bottom, I'd see that I'm looking straight in the middle. So if I line my connector up right there, I should be good to go um, to get access through that bottom bottom plug. So it's, I, you know, I think it's a really nice tool to allow you to see what's going on in your design and really avoid those sort of um, expensive mistakes where you you cut boards that have interferences. So hopefully it'll, it'll eliminate the vast majority of those for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. All right, so um, there we are. So, so we're gonna be working largely over here. Let me get this up. We're gonna be working over here to kind of get things placed, but as we go through and we get work on our placement, we're gonna go back and forth between the mechanical side and the electrical side now, because these things are linked. And so we can, uh, as we make changes here, um, those will be reflected on the other side and we'll kind of go through that process in the next video. All right, more on the next one.